Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Artist First World Radio Network, home of the best new music you've never heard and home of the best new talk shows you need to hear. Please don't forget to visit our archives page at www.artistfirst.com where you can hear all our past shows for free and on demand. You are tuning into High School Football America. This show airs at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. For more information about this show and to listen to past shows for free, please visit artistfirst.com slash jefffisher.htm. And now here's your host of High School Football America, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey, and good evening, high school football fans across America. Welcome to High School Football America for September the 15th. Definitely a uh, fall chill in the air in Chicago. Temperatures only around 60 today, but it makes you feel like high school football, doesn't it? Uh, With uh, football opening up in Connecticut this weekend, uh, 50 states now officially playing for keeps and gold medals that come at the end of the season. Believe it or not, uh, week six of the regular season games. Heck, Alaska's even entering the second half of its uh, eight-game regular season this weekend, and plenty of games to be played tonight across America. So if you're uh, looking for your favorite team and how they made out if they played tonight, go to highschoolfootballamerica.com for all of the scores from around the country tonight. And, of course, throughout the weekend, we do that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. To keep you updated, just go to highschoolfootballamerica.com and click on uh, the High School Wire, and you'll find uh, state-by-state listings of the scores. You can also follow High School Football America on Facebook and Twitter, Just go to our website, click the uh, icons at the top of the page, and then you can click like or follow, and you're all set. Uh, If you need the handle for Twitter, it's HSFB America. If you want to search us on uh, Facebook, just go and uh, type in High School Football America, and you'll be able to find us there. Great show for you tonight. We've got uh, four guests. We'll start in Florida with Corky Rogers of the Bowls School. Last Friday, Rogers won his 400th game, and we'll talk to him about becoming just the eighth head coach in America to ever surpass that milestone. He is the winningest coach in Florida. Then we'll head to Kentucky, talk with Bob Beatty, head coach of Trinity High School in Louisville. The Shamrocks have won 20 state championships overall, and uh, Beatty's led the team to eight of those tomorrow night. The Shamrocks, ranked number five by Max Preps, will square off with Cincinnati Power, St. Xavier, ranked number 16 by Max Preps in a big national showdown. The third guest tonight will be uh, Mark Cook uh, of Harrington High School. He's the athletic director there in Kansas, and he's going to talk about a a very tough week for his school. Last Friday, uh, the Railers head coach Bud Peterson died in the hospital while the team was playing a game. An assistant coach uh, came into the locker room with his team down 10-0 and uh, announced, unfortunately, that uh, Coach Peterson had passed away. And what happened after that was kind of a win-one-for-the-gipper situation as the team came out and played a a great second half, scoring three touchdowns to come from behind and win 21-10 for their late coach. And, uh, you know, that's inspirational, but uh, we've got some other inspiration on the show tonight. Uh, We'll end things with a chat with Byron Jensen of the High School Rudy Awards nominations now open to find America's most inspirational football players. And Byron will join me to talk about how you can nominate a player that exemplifies their four C's of high school football awards, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. I want to thank our sponsors for tonight, Show Blitz Group, the proud sponsor of High School Football America's media uh, strategy. You can check out more at their website at blitzgroupllc.com. Mention the High School Rudy Awards, the uh, four C's, character, courage, contribution, and commitment. Go to highschoolfootballrudyawards.com to learn how to nominate a player for the 2011 award and a great shot at scholarships. We're also being sponsored tonight by the National High School Coaches Association. The mission of the NHSEA is to provide leadership and support to coaches and administrators and their programs. To learn more and to uh, become a member, go to nhsca.com. If you'd like to uh, have a commercial here on the High School Football America radio show, just write me at jeff at highschoolfootballamerica.com. I'll send you out a uh, media kit to learn more how you can become a sponsor. But uh, right now, time to kick things into high gear. Get the interviews rolling. When we come back on High School Football America, we're going to head to Jacksonville, Florida to talk with Corky Rogers, who just won his 400th game at the Bowl School. This is High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All-Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All-World, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you could make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. 
If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies it's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. Welcome back to High School Football America. Now here's your host, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey. Uh, coming up a little bit later on the show, we've got a great show for you tonight. Bob Beatty, the head football coach at Trinity High School in Kentucky. Coach Beatty has led his school to eight state championships in 12 years and getting his team ready for a showdown with Cincinnati Power St. Xavier tomorrow night. Both teams nationally ranked in several different polls. But uh, our first guest, he knows a thing or two about state titles and national rankings. Last Friday, uh, Corky Rogers of the Bowls School in Jacksonville, Florida, won his 400th career game with his Bulldogs beating American Heritage 28-17. And Coach has captured nine state titles at Bowls. He's the winningest coach in Florida history and joins us now to fill us in on the program and talk about becoming just the eighth coach in America to ever hit that magic 400 wins mark. Thanks, Coach, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, enjoy being here. Well, yeah, we, you know, let's see. Football started back in 1875, 136 years. Eight coaches, that's it, <laughs> for one 400. So now that you've had a, almost a week to reflect on, on that number, and I know you're probably going to be modest about it, but truly, what does it mean to you to, to have reached that milestone? Jeff, really, it, it happened quicker than I thought it would in a sense that, you know, I think when you're doing what you like, I've been at, I've been at two schools to accomplish this, and I had great staff, great people around me, certainly great players, and, uh, you know, we've just kept working at it. I never thought about the number or anything and uh, just enjoying going to work each day, and the time has gone by and the numbers have added up, but it was, it was nothing I did myself. Believe me, it was a combination of great people around me and certainly great players. But we'll talk about your assistants and players coming up a little bit just to let the listeners know. Overall record now stands at 400 wins, 70 losses, one tie. You're 259 and 31 at Bowles. You were 141, 39 and 1 at your alma mater, Lehigh School. And, uh, you know, let's, let's, for people that don't know around the country, since this is a national show, that know about the Bowles School, let's talk a little bit about the school itself and how football fits into the tradition there. And then a little bit about your philosophy. Uh, who, who is Coach Corky Rogers when it comes to high school football in Florida? Well, Jeff, uh, the Bull School is, is, is a school that uh, it started out uh, as a military school, as an all-boys school at one time, and then in the late 70s uh, switched to a co-educational school. And uh, it's, it's been a very good academic school and had good athletics for a long period of time, way before I got there. I think uh, one of the things that probably I came from the west side of Jacksonville, which is, a, you know, it's not the wrong side of the track. It's just uh, more uh, working-class people probably than uh, the normal uh, people on the south side where Bowles is located. And uh, I think we probably added a little work ethic to what they already had here. It was a brilliant school, and uh, they do such a great job academically. Our swimming program has been one of the best in America for many, many years. And uh, at one time we had 19 Olympians from the swim team. Wow. There. So it, it's, it's top of the line there. But uh, football-wise, we've been very blessed. That, but they, I think one of the great things they do is they understand the, the, the certainly the importance of academics. It's, it's, it's very hard to get in bowls. Uh, it's very tough. But I think they also understand the value of athletics and have given us an opportunity to coach, and it's really been a great blessing for us. Forty years, pretty long time to be involved in high school <laughs> athletics, especially when it's become a younger man's game. Tell us a little bit about where the love of high school sports uh, comes from, from you, for you. Well, I, I think probably it started out, my father, uh, Chuck Rogers, was the head of the city recreation department for about 40 years here in Jacksonville. He had been a past captain of the University of Florida football team. And so I kind of grew up in an 
a sports-oriented family. And he believed so much in amateur athletics and, and pushed so hard for kids in every playground and park uh, to have a chance to play. And I think I, I grew up in that atmosphere, and, and I enjoyed seeing what was going on. And when I was given the opportunity to coach, uh, it just seemed like it was such a good fit. And I, I, I still today, when we got out of practice today, I, I talked about how much we as coaches really enjoyed being out there. Look, we're not the greatest coaches in the world. We don't have the greatest team. But when we go out there and all put it together and are doing our very best, I'll be darned if it's not a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the, the, the wins come along with that. Right, well, you, you can hear the energy and enthusiasm in your voice. Now, uh, one of the things I, I learned about you when I was reading to, to get ready for this interview is, you know, it's not always been rosy. Your first coaching job, you were demoted. Can you <laughs> tell the listeners a little bit about what happened there and, and, and really how did it shape you and, and kind of set you up for the man that you become? Well, it let me know that I didn't know what I was doing to start with. But uh, <laughs> when I came, when I was given the job right off the bat, I don't even think they called it offensive coordinator back then. They just said I was calling the plays. And, uh, you know, my very first coaching job, uh, uh, they gave me that opportunity. And it was a few games into the season, and the head coach said, uh, you know, let's step aside. Uh, I'm going to take care of that now. And he sent me over with the defensive secondary. So I spent another year and a half over there before he gave me the opportunity again. And I tell you what I did. I learned to do my homework and do work before. I was I was calling a lot of plays, but I had no rhyme or reason for calling them. It was just kind of what I felt like. And uh, that's not the way you should go about things. And But it was a great lesson from a great man that I learned. And uh, hopefully it did me some good down the line. But, no, it hasn't all been rosy. But I tell you, it's uh, it's always been fun. And uh, I think us in high school sports, are very blessed to have had these opportunities to coach these young people because every day is a new challenge, and uh, it just—it I think it's made it fun for all of us. Yeah. Now you had mentioned your assistants. Uh, you know, one of the ones I guess we would consider him a trusted assistant. One Belger, he played on your first team in '72. Tell me a little bit about uh, how he's helped you uh, win a 400 games, and then we'll talk about some of the other assistants as we move through there. But how how has Wayne kind of helped you in your career as a head coach? Well, I, I, I tell you, you can laugh about it, but every time I introduce him, I, I, I say that uh, he played for me, and he'll tell him, yeah, if I'd have had good coaching, my career might have gone on longer, he said. But uh, uh, starting off with me wasn't so good. But, no, he's uh, I tell you, he's uh, he has turned down more head coaching jobs over the year to stay with us. And, uh, I mean, he's, he's been a head coach, really, in, in every, anybody's mind for 25 years. But he has done – he started out coaching quarterbacks is what he did as a player – then when we needed him back in the late 70s, he switched over to coaching the offensive line. And if you ask anybody in the state of Florida, he's one of the top offensive line coaches in the state of Florida, if not the. And uh, believe me, a lot of the success we've had, or a very a great bit of it, goes, you know, it's his, a lot of his ideas, a lot of his thoughts. So, uh, but I've got guys like that that are so important. They're, they're just as important as I am. I'm just the oldest guy. <laughs> and and it just uh, I get way too much credit on this thing, but I promise you, I got great assistance, and it's been a key everywhere I've been. Well, it it is, and then as I mentioned at the top, you know the sport is changing. Uh, we are talking listeners tonight with uh, with uh, Corky Rogers, the head coach at the Bowles School, and and let's talk a little bit about the the change of of high school football through the years. I mean, there's there's now games on ESPN. There's there's national ranking services out the wazoo. Uh, what do you think about the the health of the sport and, and the change in the sport in your your 40 years that you've been there? Well, I, I love to see these uh, these games played where you know the kids are getting exposed that uh, they're playing on television they're getting seen around the country we're seeing how good a football is played in a lot of states where we never knew it was quite so good i've been impressed watching some of these things and seeing them on television see how the coaches are doing and i see an awful lot of good things out there and a lot of good teams now some of the stuff that i don't care for jeff i don't i don't really care for these ranking systems and rating systems five star four star you know you sign with a top division one school and all of a sudden you become a four-star player and you were really only a two-star player before that <laughs> and I, I don't like some of that i think it kind of i can't predict how good the kid's going to be and i don't know how some of these other people can but you know i guess it, it keeps people busy gives them something to do but i think high school sports is in a good position right now a lot of people might differ but i i see good coaching at quite a few spots now many inner cities have struggled some 
uh, people seem to be moving out to the suburbs and moving away. And then a lot of times the inner cities where I coached early on, uh, they don't quite have the facilities. They don't quite have what they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. I, I hate seeing that. And, uh, but uh, I think that there's, there are a lot of good coaches and people that care an awful lot about these youngsters, and we need to do that because we've got to guide these people. Believe me, I'm not trying to build our profession up to be more than it is, but we're one of the last straws of people that are standing up for a lot of good all the day through the – I mean, I'm talking about you know the 12 hours a day you're over there with these people, and if we do a lot of good things, it's going to make them better because we're with them more than any other teacher and even their parents in most cases. No, I, I've heard that time and time again with coaches, and I speak it when I'm out in the street. I mean, you guys, and I'm not saying that because I've got a coach on the other end of the line here, but uh, you guys really are, you know, stepping up and taking the places of families in, in a lot of these cases. That's important. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the program itself. You, you guys have had some some players there that have gone on to the NFL. You've got, uh, I guess, Edgar Bennett, uh, Leroy Butler, uh, Jason Spitz, all three were uh, Super Bowl champs with the Packers. You've had some other good ones so uh, tell me about me do you have a favorite one or two players or a favorite team or two that uh, really come to mind when you sit back and just want to smile about things you know uh, oh, sometimes people ask me rank your all-time best players or best team or so you know, <laughs> i didn't do that <laughs> i know and you know what and I, jeff i couldn't do it because I, I i know i'd slight somebody that i was probably better than somebody i mentioned but uh, i i think it's kind of it differs from team to team sometimes uh I can tell you a couple of the best players we ever played against. I, I thought I, we, we played against Emmett Smith in high school, and, and we went four overtimes in a game with them. And, and I could see what a wonderful player he was. And then in the 1998 state championship, uh, we played against Anquan Bolden. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that guy might not have been the best player I ever played against. And, and he, he, he never came off the field. And if if he hadn't have just got tired just a hair towards the end of the game, we wouldn't have won that championship. But we've been blessed in the state of Florida to have an awful lot of good people playing against us, and certainly we've had a lot of good players for us. Uh, you know, you mentioned some of those that are NFL guys, but we've had an awful lot of good college players. Uh, uh, the quarterback that, that had a phenomenal career, I believe, at Wake Forest, Riley Skinner, who graduated a year ago, if you look back at what he accomplished, at Wake Forest, who had not been very successful uh, when he got there. it was It's really a storied career. Uh, and, and we've had a lot of guys that maybe didn't match up sometimes size or speed-wise, but were very good players and have been productive at the college level. Talking with Corky Rogers tonight on High School Football America. A couple more questions. We'll let you go. Uh, let's talk about this year's team. You're off to a 2-0 and start. Uh, what do you like about this year's team? And you know what what does this team have to do to, to get to a level that uh, takes you to a state championship type matchup in December? Well, well Jeff, we first off, they, they, we had a real alignment in districts and so forth, and it, it left us with having to. We only have a four team district. Those are games you're guaranteed you have to play. So we had to pick up, we're one of the four, so we had to pick up seven games. Well, you know, we're a private school. Uh, we've had, you know, some success. Uh, finding games is hard. So the seven games we've got, they're all much bigger schools than we are. We're only a school of 770-some people, and that's boys and girls. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're playing three and 4,000, uh, you know, people teams when we're playing them. So we're giving up quite a bit. Uh, and, and we know that our schedule is loaded this year with, with great teams. Uh, we, were, we played in South Florida last week, just almost in Miami, and uh, we've got a team coming in from Crestview. That's the panhandle of Florida out towards Pensacola. Uh, we've got our hands full. We don't have the depth that we once had, but and last Friday night we lost our quarterback to a torn ACL. And, and that was certainly a heartbreaker for us. And he was such a wonderful young man. And, uh, you know, so now we're kind of back to square one. Uh, the youngster that's going to be playing tomorrow night, uh, it'll be his first varsity start. And, and, you know, we don't know where we're going to stand, but we're trying to play as hard as we can. But uh, Bowles is uh, the kids are always going to play hard. Now, I don't know how far that's going to take us this year because of the toughness of the schedule. 
well, you get those 40 years to lean upon. So I'm sure you'll figure it out some way, Coach. And we'll just end with the, the last question that you probably get asked a lot, and I'm not asking because I want you out the door or anything. But, uh, you know, what, what keeps you doing this, and how much longer are you going to do it? Well, I, I wish I – what keeps me doing it is that I love doing it. And, and, and some of these other coaches, they're all, we're all such good friends. You know, they say, oh, let's go another year. Let's go another year. You know, it always kind of keeps adding up. But, you know, I don't ever want to be doing it just to be doing it. I want to give it the very best. And whenever it's enough, and I think I'll know, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to go out. If somebody, hey, if somebody needs an assistant, I, I'll coach a position. I'll, I'll work. I don't have to be the head coach. But I, I want to be doing something. I just don't want to sit by the wayside. So I don't know if I answered your question, but i tell you something. <laughs> I'm glad you gave us an opportunity to speak for our city and our school because uh, we, we, we're at a very fine place down here in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, we're glad to be able to represent them on the football field. Well, we were glad to have you on the show, and you talked about the the wrong side of the tracks or the other side. I've been to Amelia Island, so I guess that's the good side of the track. <laughs> when you're that's the good side. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Coach, you know, continue. Continued success. Uh, sorry to hear that your quarter back went down, but like I said, I think with your experience there, you'll be able to figure this out some way. And hey, the good news is you probably won't be demoted this time around, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you, partner. I really appreciate it. Yep, you have a great rest of the season. Thank you, coach. Okay, buddy. Bye bye. Yep. That is Corky Rogers, the uh, winningest coach in uh, Florida history. 400 wins. He reached number 400. Last Friday, and uh, boy, the guy has just gotten it done. Nine state titles there, and as you can tell, uh, whenever you get some of these guys on that have been doing it for a while, you understand why they've been doing it for a while. It's, it's coming from the heart, and it obviously uh, comes from Coach Rogers' heart. Going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to the Bluegrass State, talking Trinity football with Bob Beatty of uh, the Louisville School, the Trinity Shamrocks. When we come back on High School Football America, you can catch it here. You're listening to High School Football America, your ticket to all that is high school football in America on the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All-Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All-World, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you can make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top-secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. Welcome back to High School Football America. Now here's your host, Jeff Fisher. Thank you very much, Corey. A great show so far. Just got off the line with uh, Corky Rogers from the Bowl School in Florida. He's the winningest coach in Florida history, just won number 400. He is uh, only one of eight men to ever do that in the 136 years of high school football. Don't forget, you can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter. Go to High School Football America. Click on the icon. Still ahead, we're going to talk with Athletic Director Mark Cook from uh, Tiny Harrington High School in Kansas about his uh, school's win one for the Gipper story that we mentioned at the top, uh, a sad story where head coach Bud Peterson passed away last week in the hospital. But uh, the, the good end of the story was the team rallied, uh, scored three unanswered, unanswered touchdowns after learning it about at halftime and uh, went on to win 21-10. And uh, now we're going to switch to Kentucky and bring in uh, Coach Bob Beatty, record of 142-21 and 21 with eight state titles in 12 years. Uh, at Trinity High School, and he's just done a great job down there, considered one of the, the great coaches in America. Welcome to the show, Coach. Thank you for having me. 
Uh, we're, we're happy to have you here, and uh, you got a big game coming up tomorrow against Cincinnati St. Xavier. But uh, before we get into that, let's educate the listeners a little bit about the program. The numbers speak for themselves, 20 overall state championships, but what, what's the core part of Trinity football as it, as it comes out of you as the head man? Well, you know, there's a tremendous amount of tradition at our school, and uh, I tell our kids all the time that, uh, you know, before – I ever arrived on the scene, Trinity had won 12 state championships before I ever got there. And, and when I leave, that Trinity's going to win a, a lot more state championships when I leave. And so the, the, the message there is that it isn't about one person, and it's a tremendous school that cares and, and really tries for excellence in everything that they do. And I'm, I'm talking the, the choir all the way down to our custodial staff, and the place itself is a really beautiful school, and it sits in the heart of St. Matthews in Louisville, Kentucky, and, and uh, you know, there's just so much pride in the school, so we are just a spoke in that wheel, and uh, that's kind of what Trinity is, you know, you're very proud to be a part of it, and uh, I'm very fortunate to work there and, and uh, really, really love what we do. Now, uh, you're off to a 4-0 start, uh, lots of national accolades. If you believe in the polls, you're number five, according to Max Preps, and a lot of other ones have you ranked in there. The offense clicking, uh, averaging 50 points a game. Everything that I've read about you over the years as i prepared for this interview talks about the offensive prowess there. You've had some darn good quarterbacks. Tell the listeners a little bit about the, uh, the offensive philosophy you have there at Trinity. Well, it dates all the way back to um, when I was at Blue Springs High School right outside of Kansas City. Uh, we we uh, started with the run and shoot. I was an offensive coordinator there for years and got to study uh, a lot with John Jenkins, who at that time was an offensive coordinator at uh, the University of Houston and then also Mouse Davis. Uh, and those guys were heavy into the run and shoot. So for years we were strictly run and shoot. And uh, then – as we started to progress, and as football, you know, teams catch up with you on defense, then we started to go to uh, what we call multiple personnel groups. And uh, we liked that because I could see that defensive coordinators were scratching their heads. And, and so now we're, you know, we're everything from five wide empty to uh, two tight wing uh, eye down on the goal line. And, and uh, again, we have multiple personnel groups, which, you know, you basically see – just about every weekend on television. But what we found out was is, is we're, we're going to give you a, a multitude of formations, and our kids really like that. We utilize more kids, but, you know, it all comes down to what those five guys do up front. And if those guys can block the run and hold those guys out long enough to throw the football and throw it with efficiency, then you're going to be really successful on offense. And, and so far that's been pretty good. We call it the system. And, uh, you know, we fit kids into the system, and then the system will fit to the kids. And I think that's a, a great part of our success. Yeah, well, you must be reading my question sheet here because uh, you dovetailed into my next question. Before I went to all those skilled players, I was going to talk about this senior late in offensive line you have. You've got an Illinois uh, Verbal and uh, Joey Warburg. Tell me a little bit about those kids up front. Uh, give them some name. Give the name some props here and, and let us know, uh, you know what they have to do to, to get better this year to take you back to another possible runner to state championship. Well, it starts with our center. Uh, he's actually been our center, starting center for about two and a half years. And, uh, about halfway through his sophomore year, we put him in there. And, and this is the guy that makes all of our offensive line calls and, and all of our protection calls. And so we put a lot on that kid to audible at the line of scrimmage. And he'll, you'll see him raise his head up and tell the quarterback to go to this play. So the quarterback doesn't have to think about that because – as he's approaching the line of scrimmage, he's going to tell us whether you know we got an open field safety or whether we have a closed field safety. So that takes a lot off him, and, and that's John Michael Hiley, and this does a tremendous job. And over at the right tackle position is Joy Warburg, and there's a kid that we started uh, kind of a spindly little sophomore, and our belief is that let's throw him into the fire, and, and uh, they're going to get better, but let's do it by games. And uh, so we started him as a sophomore, and we like, we like those long tackles. And he's about 6'5", and he's about 245, and he can run. And uh, so Joey does a great job, and, and he's got a verbal commitment to Illinois right now. And uh, he's really just so far had a tremendous year. And so we tailor our offense around those guys. We've got a little, uh, a little firebug in at guard by the name of Eric Grayler. And he, he, he makes us go. He's uh, not all that big. He's probably about 6'1", about 200 pounds, but he's extremely intelligent. 
and uh, he plays our guard position. We've moved him around because of some uh, some injuries. And uh, our other our left guard is a, is a young man named Patrick LaFollette, and this was a young man that uh, was a backup linebacker, and we went to him and said, hey, you know, if you're – if you're happy with being a backup linebacker, that's fine. If you'd like to move into our offensive guard spot and start, we feel like that you can do that. And he was there all of last year. And so, um, you know, those kids kind of anchor us down. We have another young man, Lance Kaufman's at right guard, and he's, he's just a, what we call a typical Trinity kid. Came in and was kind of spindly and and looked like kind of a lanky little freshman and hit the weight room hard, and, and he started for us the last two games, and, and we like to say that he brings a load because uh, we had a coach the other day hold a bag for him on one of our trap drills, and the coach ended up on his back. So the coach no longer holds that bag anymore. <laughs> We're talking with Bob Beatty, the head uh, football coach at Trinity High School in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, talking about uh, the, the program. they got a big game tomorrow night against uh, St. Xavier out of uh, Cincinnati. They also have another big – St. X game that we'll talk about a little bit later. Let's let's talk a little skill here. You've got a junior quarterback played last year, Travis Wright, and from what I've read, uh, a pretty darn good one. Seventy percent uh, of his passes completed in the first uh, you know part of his career here. Uh, Brian Brom's name comes up in the articles that I read about him. How good is this kid? Well, he he has a demeanor unlike any kid that that I've coached. Um, he he just is so calm at all times. Uh, last year. And uh, at home, we played Elder, and Elder was extremely talented, and, and we were young, and we had to go on a uh, last two-minute drive to win the game, and actually, we won the game on the very last play. There were two seconds left on the clock. We ran the play. We scored. And so they interviewed Travis after the game, and his reply was they asked him if he was nervous. And uh, he said, why? It's only football. <laughs> and that's the kind of kid you want at the helm um, I think he has things in perspective. Um, you know, he knows he's going to make mistakes, and he has no conscience with it. So he can move on to the next play and forget the mistake that he made, and I think that's the quality of a great quarterback. And, you know, this year he's throwing in the high 70s, and, and we really like that. Let's get the hands into, uh, you know, the ball into the hands of our playmakers and, and let them go to work. Makes you look like a genius, right? <laughs> uh, you know what? All those guys really, really uh, help me look like a, a, a very intelligent coach. You know, players <laughs> do that. Let's, uh, I know you've got a, a good receiver in James Quick, another junior, so that you've got to be smiling about that combination. What makes those two so special together uh, between Travis and, and James? Well, I think you know if you look at our stat sheet, uh, the one thing that we're always known for is we spread the football around. And, and that's the one thing that I, as a defensive coordinator, years and years ago, I, I coached small college ball in the NAI conference. And I, it drove me nuts when, when teams would have receivers with four and another receiver with five and another receiver with six. And you don't, you know, if you have one guy, then you can do a lot of things defensively to shut that down. Mm -hmm. But to spread that thing around is, is good. Now, James Quick is a very, very talented young man. But when you look at those other kids that, that fill in those spots, they're also very talented, and, and we feel like that we spread it around. But, uh, you know, Travis is a very intelligent kid, so when he, when he needs a go-to guy, but he's also intelligent enough that he's not going to force the ball to James. It just so happens that uh, in these first three games that uh, he's got himself open, and, and Travis does a great job of getting him the ball. Yeah, James caught uh, 88 balls last year. Let's uh, talk tomorrow, about tomorrow night's game. Uh, St. Xavier from Cincinnati, another nationally ranked team. Uh, how good is this St. X team that you're preparing for? Well, all you have to do is look at their tradition as well. And, and uh, for the time that I've been in Kentucky, uh, I think we've played them four or five times, and we've only walked away smiling once. And so, you know, they have a lot of tradition at their school, and they place a lot of kids in the co uh, collegiate level. And they just do a tremendous job with their staff and, and have a lot of kids out for football just like we do at Trinity. And, uh, you know, football is a big thing at their school as it is in Trinity. And so they have a tremendous student section. And, uh, again, they're very, very talented. They get a lot of great athletes from the Cincinnati area. And it's going to be a huge, huge stage tomorrow night. Uh, what, what a tremendous opportunity for a high school athlete. And, uh our kids are very, very excited about the challenge. But a very good team we're going against, and we're looking forward to it.
Yeah, now I'm not sure if you're the guy in charge of the schedule or not, but there aren't many cupcakes in the schedule as you go down. I mean, you got two of Tennessee's best in the Brentwood Academy, Montgomery Bell Academy. You came away with wins there. Uh, really took it to Elder last week, another Cincy team. You have, uh, you know, St. X tomorrow, Cathedral out of Indianapolis, top 4A team in Indiana. You still have your St. X from Louisville. T- tell me about this schedule. You're putting the kids up there to, to really test them. Well, you know, we've been building for this for several years. Um, all of those schools that you just mentioned, we have been playing at the freshman and JV level mm-hmm. and uh, more or less expected uh, this to come when we had our redistricting um, um, a year ago and we kind of knew that this was coming down the road. So we've been playing these people under class and, and uh, to, to show our kids, hey, we can play at this level. And uh, freshmen and JV have done a tremendous job playing those schools and, and those exact schools that you said. So this year uh, we said, hey, we've got an opportunity to play these people. And, uh, you know, the thing that we love is, is, is there are no down times in practice. There are no uh, – the kids seem much more focused, and, and especially with opponents like Cincy X. To me, it makes it easier to prepare for and when I say easy to prepare for, I'm talking about you. You, I'm talking about the focus. You know, obviously the teams aren't easy, but it makes us easy preparation-wise because our kids are, are uh, straight ahead and they know what's ahead of them. And that's the other thing about our kids; they're very intelligent, knowing what they're going to go against, and they're very excited about that. Now that makes a lot of sense. And before we let you go here, we're talking with Bob Beatty from Trinity High School in Louisville. I I mentioned you on the phone when I talked to you earlier today. I I do have some some people on the other side of the enemy line there from St. X in Louisville. And I've read about this. I've I've been told about it. Thirty thousand plus when you guys play your regular season game. Tell us a little bit about that rivalry for listeners across the country that that aren't familiar with it. Well, this this thing is an event. Um, You have to admire uh, Trinity and and. You know, it was founded in 1953, and we have over 14,000 alumni. And and when you have 14,000 alumni that care, then then you realize what a big event this is. And so, you know, you have people coming in from all over the nation to spend that entire week, and and not just the game. You know, we have all kinds of golf outings against the the uh, uh, Tigers over there, and they have all kinds of. Uh, you know, awards, and, and it's it's the equivalent of a public school homecoming or a college homecoming. So it's an event. And, uh, you know, when you walk in that stadium and, and, and there's, you know, 30, I think 38,000 was the largest since I've been there. I mean, now think about a high school kid playing in front of 38,000. And, uh, you know, people are, are gas at it. Before my father passed away, you know, he, he came to one of those games, and then he took the paper back with him because he wanted to prove to everybody that it wasn't 3,800 people, it was 38,000 people. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it really is tremendous. But, again, it, it's an entire week, and we have all these uh, 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 just the competitions at school and, and uh, all of the floats and all of the pep rallies and things like that. And then throughout the week, we play each other in soccer, and we play each other in underclass football and, and all of that. So it, it really is a tremendous event for the city of Louisville, and, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to be a part of it. Yeah, well, I've got that circled. Uh, as I told you, I live up in Chicago, so uh, this year it may work that I may be able to come down there and check that out because I've been I've been told about it for a long time, so I, I look forward to it. And, Coach, I just really appreciate you taking the time tonight uh, to talk uh, to us before the night of your big game, so thank you very much. Thank you for having me, and uh, I appreciate it. Have a, have a good rest of the season. And that is Coach Bob Beatty of Trinity High School in Louisville. They're getting ready for a big national showdown tomorrow night against Cincinnati's St. X, uh, number uh, five versus number 16, according to the Max Preps national rankings this week. When we come back, we're going to uh, talk some football from the state of Kansas. It's actually a, uh, an incredible performance by a football team in memory of their coach. You won't want to miss this one. Stay with us. Coming back with Mark Cook from Harrington High School on High School Football America. This is the Artist First Radio Network. You've heard of being named All-Conference, but only one organization has earned the classification of being All-World, the United States Navy. Whether it's humanitarian efforts, fighting terrorism, or protecting America's freedoms, the Navy is the team that helps us all win big. To learn how you could make it to the big league, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. 
If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually, a lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top-secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. And now back to High School Football America. Thank you very much, Corey. Jeff Fisher back with you on a Thursday night. A great show so far. We've been to Florida and Kentucky. A couple of great coaches. Corky Rogers, 400 wins. Uh, just got the number 400 on Friday night. He's at the Bulls School in Jacksonville. And then we talked a few moments ago with Bob Beatty at Trinity as they get ready for their big showdown with St. X from Cincinnati, uh, two nationally ranked teams. And now uh, we're going to head to a, a much smaller town as we head out to uh, Kansas, uh, to uh, Harrington, to talk about a very sad story. Last uh, Friday, head coach Bud Peterson passed away in the hospital while his team was uh, playing a game against West Franklin. Now, Harrington was down 10 nothing at the half when an assistant coach had to tell the team the very sad news of Coach Peterson's passing. Second half, the Railers outscore their opponents 21-zip and come back uh, to win one of those for the Gipper. And joining me now is uh, Mark Cook, the athletic director at Harrington, to talk about uh, Coach, and, and what the, the students and the, the entire community has had to do over the last week uh, to respond to some very tough conditions. So, Mark, thank you for taking the time to talk to us tonight. Well, thank you, Scott, or Mr. Fisher. Um, I'd like to, first of all, congratulate that coach for 400 wins, and good luck to uh, Bob in the St. X game there. Yeah, no, it's it's been uh, we we've had some good ones on, and and your coach uh, who just passed away, forty years of of coaching, and you know before we kind of get into to Coach Peterson a little bit um, and what happened on Friday night, I'd really like to to think back over his career. I know he was only there for two years, but tell us a little bit about uh, Bud Peterson and uh, in his short time, what kind of impact he had on the school, the the team, the community. Well. Bud was one of those guys that uh, grew up in the area. He actually went to high school at a little school called Center High School just south of us. And he uh, went up to Bethany College and played football there. And then uh, he came back, he got married and came back, and uh, he uh, spent most of his career, 25 years of it, at Center High School. Well, then he went over to Council Grove and spent some time there, and then uh, he retired. And we needed a, a head football coach a couple of years ago, so we, we took the opportunity and talked to Bud. And, and Bud came in, and, and he's really turned our program around. Uh, his first year, a year ago, he didn't win a single game, and this year we started off, we're now 2-0. and And uh, we just so happened to play Council Grove, the team that he used to coach, uh, tomorrow night. <clears throat> uh, Bud was one of those guys that uh, he, he does things right, and he did things right. He coached... Uh, the good things and his expectations of, of the young men that he coached were were very high both on and off the field and it didn't matter uh, what your abilities were your talent level uh, your skill level your color your size anything Bud coached every single kid so he was one of those guys that uh, really made it came in and made a quick impact on the kids uh, the parents our program. And even uh, even our community and everybody knows him in this area, and it was just a, a a hard hard loss when we heard about it. And you mentioned that uh, about 150 students in the high school, very very small town. So if you can kind of take us back, and I know that's a little tough, but set the scene for us. So I guess Coach Peterson went to the hospital early last last week, so he wasn't on the sidelines Friday night. So I'm assuming everything up until game time seemed to be okay. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, Last we, we won our first game on September 2nd, our opening game, and uh, on uh, Monday, which was Labor Day, that Monday we uh, I actually spoke to Bud, and, and things were good. And uh, what happened was, you know, I said, well, Bud, let's get him ready, and I'll see you at school on Tuesday. 
Well, on Tuesday morning, about mid-morning, uh, Bud said that he was going to go to the hospital. It didn't feel very good. So he went on to the hospital, and, and they checked him in on Tuesday, and they said it was uh, some pneumonia, and they were going to give him some <clears throat> IVs and of antibiotics, and, and he would be ready to go by Friday. And uh, I can't really remember if it's Tuesday night or even Wednesday morning, but uh, I got word that they were taking him down to Wichita, Kansas, to a bit bigger hospital. And I thought, okay, he'll be out this week, uh, possibly uh, even the next game. And w so what we did is we went ahead and made some contingency plans with the assistant coach and uh, things like that. And, you know, things went on, on like normal. Uh, I spoke with Bud every day and, and his wife. And, you know, um, being a former football coach, you know, I, I kept saying, don't worry. Don't worry about us. We've got everything taken care of. You just get better. Well, Friday night came, and, and uh, Bud's son-in-law stepped onto our sideline, and he, he told me and the, and the assistant coach that, that Bud had passed. And at that point, it was just right before halftime. And uh, it was I, literally, I just, I just could not believe it. Um, it was a sad deal. And, uh, and then halftime came, and our kids, our assistant coaches told our kids at halftime, the bad news. And, and it was a very emotional time and, and hard for our kids. I, absolutely. I mean, I can't even you know, put myself into those shoes. But since you were there, you were on the sidelines, you saw the news being taken. Uh, kind of give me a little thumbnail sketch of you know, how you saw through your eyes how these young men, these teenagers, reacted. I mean, it's obviously gotten a lot of national publicity, the you know, winning one for the coach sort of thing. But, I mean, I don't know how else you can describe it. Well, uh, in all of their eyes, you know, you could just see they, they were very emotional. Some tears were going. Um, one of the big things was it was almost like a silent rally cry of we're going to stay the course. We're going we're gonna to continue to do what Bud wanted to do. We're going to stay his course, and we're going to do the right things. And we told the kids we're not quitting. Uh, we've got a whole half to play and we need to decide who's going to end the game. Are they or are we? And our kids stepped up and they responded and they played lights out that second half. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from West Franklin. They're, they're a good football team. We just, uh, our kids just stepped up and our kids just uh, played extremely well. And, you know, I, I truly believe they played for Bud that night. And, as far as through my eyes, I've never been so proud of the of our kids. You know, coming off of a nine loss season, the season before, being down ten to nothing. You know, finding out your coach had passed. I was never so proud of these kids ever. You know, I've never been more proud that they stepped up and they they played, they performed. Yes, we're talking with Mark Cook, the uh, athletic director at Harrington High School in, in Kansas. And tomorrow night, as you go, uh, as we end the interview here, I just want to talk about tomorrow night. You will be honoring Coach at a ceremony. As you said, it's a very, very small town. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you think it's going to be like tomorrow night, because I, I can't imagine it being anything other than a, a very, very emotional scene for your home game. It will be. <clears throat> Excuse me. It will be. And uh, like I said, you know, um, in these communities where everybody, where they're so close and they're small and everybody knows a lot of people and families, there's going to be a lot of people here. Uh, we have a lot of local news media that have already want, want to be here to see it. Uh, of course, we're playing the school that Bud retired from, so a lot of those kids uh, played under Bud also. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to have a little more of silence. Um, uh, you know, we're going to do, we're going to do what's right. We're going to stay the course and, uh, you know, there was there was never any question as to uh, what we're going to do or how tasteful it's going to be because it's going to be tasteful and classy. We know that, um, but I could really see us having a huge crowd here. And, and for our little school, you know, we we get five six hundred people here, then that's a large crowd for us, and, and that's kind of what we're anticipating. So, and the whole community is, I mean, they're just kind of sitting on, you know, on in a waiting kind of a holding pattern waiting game right now you know waiting for that game tomorrow i mean we're, our kids are ready to play 
sure, and celebrate the life of uh, Coach Bud Peterson. Well, Mark, I, yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're watching your young son play a middle school game there, so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and share with America uh, Bud's legacy and, and what he's done, and, and I wish you guys the best of luck, and our, our prayers are with you there. Well, I appreciate you you guys uh, you know, calling us and, and, and being concerned with us. And, and it's really – I need to thank you guys because sometimes – you know, small schools like this, we don't necessarily get the the press or the limelight like the bigger schools. <laughs> but uh, you guys do a great job, and, and we sure appreciate the time you've given us. Well, we, we appreciate uh, all, all that everyone does, whether it's big or small. So thank you for those kind words, and best of luck tomorrow night, and best of luck with the rest of the season. Hey, thank you, sir, and, and thank you, and good luck to everybody and every coach out there. Thank you very much. All right. That is, uh, yep. Good night. That is Mark Cook, the uh, athletic director at Harrington High School, talking about the untimely passing of Bud Peterson, 61 years old, uh, 164 wins, 109 losses, and 40 years of coaching. He was the uh, 1997 Kansas eight-man Division One champion when he won that title. And uh, just uh, our condolences go out to uh, Coach Peterson's family and the entire community there in Harrington. Well, we're going to take our uh, final break. When we come back, we're going to stay on the inspirational track. We'll talk with. Uh, Byron Jensen of the High School Rudy Awards. That and more when we come back on High School Football America. This is the Artist First Radio Network. If you don't clean up your room, the Board of Health is going to condemn it. The Board of Health doesn't even know about your room. What's more, they don't care. You know, if you keep making that face, it's going to freeze that way. Not unless you're someplace really, really cold. Actually. A lot of the warnings moms hand out are exaggerated. If you don't get your blood pressure checked, you could have high blood pressure, not even know it, and you could die from a stroke. But she's right about that one. Call the American Heart Association or visit our website to learn more. The hottest technology in the world isn't being developed in Silicon Valley. In the United States Navy, more top-secret technologies are being created than ever before. Incredible machines made of stealth materials that fly by themselves. The only problem with these incredible technologies? It's a shame the enemy can't see them. To learn more, call 1-800-USA-NAVY or visit Navy.com. Navy. Accelerate your life. And now back to High School Football America. Thank you very much, Corey. Jeff Fisher with you here tonight. Uh, great show so far and still more to come as we uh, go back out to uh, Bend, Oregon, to talk with uh, Byron Jensen. We talked to him on the NHSCA Sports Hour about the Inspirium Sports Awards coming up this year. Uh, but this one uh, we're going to talk about right now is the one that's uh, coming around for its third year. It's the High School Rudy Awards 2011 style. So welcome back into the show, Byron. Good to be here, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's uh, just kind of start with the origin of this. We know about that famous guy named Rudy from Notre Dame, but uh, tell our listeners a little bit about how the uh, the Rudy Wards got started. Sure. Well, our, our founder, uh, John Ballantyne and Rudy, had a relationship or began a relationship through a, a mutual friend, and, and John was really instrumental in helping Rudy build up the college football Rudy Ward, same premise, trying to find inspirational kids playing football at the D1 level. And after two years of helping Rudy uh, do that, um, we decided that, you know what, we've got to do this at the high school level. And so two years ago, 2009, we launched the first year of the high school football Rudy Wards in search of the most inspiring kids in the country. And, and the premise was simple, is find those kids that – that uh, have the biggest heart and not necessarily the best stats and, and almost 400 nominations in that first year. Uh, just had a great turnout and ended up finding a young man from Baton Rouge, Louisiana that had an incredible story and the very reason we decided to launch this award. So how does it all work if you've got a kid out there that you know uh, kind of fits into your, what you call the four C's, character, courage, contribution, and commitment? How do you get a kid nominated? Sure. Well, like you said, anybody can nominate, really. Historically, it's, it's been the coach. Uh, but last year, those numbers have started to change a little bit in terms of teachers and parents hearing about the award. You have to go online to our website, highschoolrudywards.com. All you have to do is, is click on the button, nominate a Rudy today, and that takes you through the application process and fill out some basic questions and, and tell the story, upload a picture, and you're off and running. 
Now, uh, on the NHSCA Sports Hour, we talked about one of uh, your runner-ups last year. Uh, one, your winner last year, Chance Anthony from Breckenridge County High School, was quite an inspirational story. We had him on the, the show last year when he won it. Uh, tell the listeners a little bit about uh, the type of kid that uh, Chance is, because I think he, like many other of your, uh, your top two or three kids, encapsulates what we're really looking for with these awards. Absolutely. Chance, we had the, the pleasure of going down and celebrating him as the winner last year at his high school in Breckenridge County and just being able to talk to a lot of the people in his community, his teachers. And, and the one thing that resonated with me that kind of was the common thread is, is that he was of this mindset that even though I was born missing the lower half of my right arm, I'm not going to let that stop me from doing what I want to do. And I think that's kind of the, the thread with all of the nominees, and whether it be something personally um, or, or you know, some kind of affliction or something that's happened within their family life, they have this determination that they're not going to be stopped. And because of that, they inspire the people on their team, their school, their community. And, and we love hearing those stories and, and help celebrating those young kids and, and showing what is possible. We're talking with Byron Jensen of the High School Rudy Awards. Go to highschoolrudyawards.com, uh, High School Football America, a proud uh, mouthpiece, if you will, to kind of spread the word out there of what's going on. So go to the website and check it out. Uh, one of the things we uh, didn't get to on the, the last show on the NHSCA Sports Hour was your, your selection committee. Uh, uh, the, these kids are getting looked at by some of the best. So go through a little bit of who you have on that committee. Absolutely. Well, led by uh, a local resident here in Bend, Oregon, Drew Bledsoe, uh, is the committee chairman. And we've had people, the, the kind of the people that have been on it the last couple of years, Sean Alexander, uh, NFL MVP in 2005, Andrea Kramer, who's done incredible work uh, with NBC and through the Olympics, uh, Jim Morris Sr., former NFL head coach. And then last week or a couple of weeks ago, we, we asked Drew to kind of help us out a little bit, and, and he put in a pitch. And, and last week or two weeks ago was a big week for us. We got six championship rings on our selection committee led by Troy Aikman, who I'm sure everybody knows, Dallas Cowboys, as well as Teddy Bruschi. Wow. Uh, so adding those two people was, uh, was huge for us and couldn't be happier. And, and both of them are very excited to be a part of this. Drew has kind of talked to them about it, and, and they know – that, uh, that they're going to be, when it gets to that point where we turn it over to, their, to them as the selection committee members, their, their hands are going to be full because they're going to be reading some great stories. Very darn impressed with uh, your growth here as you enter year number three. And throughout the season, you're going to be keeping in touch with me, and we're going to tell some of the stories out there and keep driving people to the website. So we're running out of time here, but, Byron, I really appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we'll be talking soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. That is Byron Jensen of the High School Rudy Awards. Go to highschoolrudyawards.com to learn how to nominate a player. And like I said, uh, stay with us throughout the season to learn more about that. Well, we're up against it tonight, but we want to thank all of our guests, including Byron. Uh, on the show tonight, Corky Rogers from the Bowles School in Jacksonville, Florida. Congratulations on win number 400. Bob Beatty from Trinity High School in Louisville, Kentucky, getting ready for their big battle with St. X from Cincinnati tomorrow night. Two national powers going at it. And then uh, the interview with Mark Cook from Harrington High School. What a great job he did explaining the, uh, the untimely death of Bud Peterson and how his team, after learning at halftime, being down 10 nothing, after they learned at halftime that Coach Peterson had passed away in a hospital, they came back scoring 21 unanswered points to win their second straight game. Last year, that team did not did not a repeat win a, a ball game so uh, quite a great story in that tiny town in Kansas out there. I want to thank our uh, sponsors tonight. Blitz Group, go to blitzgroupllc.com, the High School Rudy Awards at highschoolrudyawards.com and the NHSCA. Learn more about membership by going to the National High School Coaches Association website at nhsca.com. I want to thank Corey back in Ohio for producing the show and look forward to talking to you next week on High School Football America when we'll have new guests talking about the top Stories from the week that was and looking ahead to the week that will be. This is High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network. We'll talk to you next week. You put your keys between your knuckles. Someone.